the Believe in Hornets podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. My name is Sam. Muggsy is on the line. Muggsy, how are you? Good, Sam. How's it going, partner? It's going pretty well. How you there doing? There we go. Cheers to you. All right, Daddy. Cheers to you, buddy. Oh, for sure. I need to go on a Harris Teeter run. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm low on ammo over here. That's all right. <laughs> um, early in the week. Yes, yeah, early in the week. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, I hope everyone's doing well, doing well out there on a nice sunny day as we're recording this on a Tuesday. Um, unlike what a lot of the other country, well, the rest of the country is seeing a lot of snow. It's kind of crazy. A lot of whiteness, yeah. But uh, I'm here for it. I'm from the Midwest. I'm not trying to deal with any uh, any snow <laughs> right now. But uh, we have a, it's a kind of a, a weird time in the NBA, all things considered. Um, not even just Hornets related. Uh, we'll get into the Hornets and their games being postponed in a second, but I want to start this episode off talking to Muggsy about Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond, two players Mm -hmm. who have um, a really solid pedigree in the league, um, but have basically reached a a wall with their franchises and are being told, we're going to trade you and you're not playing until we trade you. Um, Muggsy, how are you feeling about um, what the Cavs and Pistons respectively are and how they're they're handling their um, this kind of situation with their with their players here? Yeah, I mean, very bold, very bold. I've never seen anything like this in terms of organizations just coming out saying we're going to trade you, but we don't want you to play. Um, I mean, I don't understand the method behind that. Normally, you want a person playing to try to get his value up and as opposed to him possibly getting hurt. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of sad to see especially the two players you just mentioned, to see it come to this, you know, come to this point because they are they're they're former all-star players. Um once upon a time, you know, Blake almost, you know, possibly was considered being the face of the league, you know, and being that type of a status, you know, when he was, you know, healthy and being in that lob city considered yeah. with him and, and Chris Paul and DeAndre Jordan up in, in the Clippers. So that's a big that's a big turnaround. And then Drummond, who had such an amazing, you know, career at, at Detroit, you know, but the game has changed. You know, the big man has become, you know, that less important unless you have a certain role. You know, you gotta have a certain role to play on, on I mean in this league now, if you a legit center. Uh you're either gonna be a rebounder, a shot blocker to protect the paint, or you're gonna be a stretch five. You know, you, you got to be either or. Um, it's no back towards the basket, throw it in to go get me, you know, points in this, you know, lead anymore. So guys going to have to reinvent themselves. And then, But, again, it's sad to see those two um, at this point, even though Blake is a little more injury, eager to more in his, uh, on his way out of the league as opposed to Drummond. Still, you know, relatively young. You know, not too old in, in, in age concern, especially looking at LeBron, 36, still going. Mm-hmm. So um, you, you would think that he still has some gas in the tank. Hopefully he can find a, a suitable team that's out there that can use, utilize the service. The podcast will continue in a second. I just want to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, BetOnline.ag. Football might be over, but NBA, college basketball, and the NHL are in full swing. And the only place... You should be betting on these sports is betonline.ag. Maybe you like the way the Hornets are playing and you want to put a little money on them. Well, you can do that here. BetOnline even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV. BetOnline has hundreds of props with real-time odds on almost anything you can imagine. And of course, the 24-hour online casino. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's betonline.ag. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. As we're recording this, it is Tuesday evening. Earlier today, Tuesday, uh, we heard that Wednesday's game and the next game were postponed for the Hornets. Um, four San Antonio players, I believe, or at least four people in the, in the organization. I'm not quite sure if it was players or staff, but four positive tests from the San Antonio side. Obviously, the Hornets just played them. On Sunday, things are a little up in the air uh, for the Hornets. Uh, it's looking like they'll play again on Saturday against the Warriors, which will be a lot of fun. Hopefully, we get that game on the weekend. But, um, Muggsy, this is the second time um, we the Hornets have been impacted by 
um, that the league's health and safety protocols. Um, what, what, what do you make of, of this situation? Well, what well, that's the nature of the, uh, of the business today uh, game right now. And I mean, you, you got to follow the protocol that they, and the NBA has been very strict about contract tracing. Anybody come in contact or, or been exposed to um, the virus, then they're going to shut them down. They pull the team as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the protocol. And I think no, no, fall through the Hornets, you know, they've been lucky and fortunate that everything's been great on that end in terms of following protocol. But, you know, unfortunately, it's a big league. It's a lot of players. And, uh, and I don't know if, it, as you just mentioned, staff or players who came down with it. But and just being careful, being safe to make sure that, you know, they follow the right procedures and make sure that everybody get back out there healthy. I mean, it could affect them. Hopefully it don't affect the Hornets too much. It's not a long layover, a long layoff for them. And, and rightfully so, it could be helpful. You know, guys could get their legs back on the knee from um, some injuries that kind of get healed up. Um, Nick, you know, a little Nick pick hail, I mean, injuries could get healed back up. So hopefully they're using it in that regard. Um, but, you know, right now they're in the fight, you know, being in the seventh place mm -hmm. in the standards right now. So um, things are looking pretty good, pretty promising. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's kind of scary because we don't know what this – disease can do to you. Um, Jason Tatum was quoted saying like, he still doesn't always like really have his lungs back yet after having COVID. Like these guys need their lungs to perform at a high level. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, you know, erring on the side of caution, always the best route in this instance. Um, along those lines though, you mentioned uh, injuries. Um, Hayward and Devante have uh, some lingering injury issues. Hopefully maybe this, this time off can do them some good. So they'll be ready against the Warriors team. Um, and then it, I think what I saw on Twitter was, um, and um, I think I saw this on Rod Boone's account, um, who, who I had on the channel the other, um, well, yesterday, as you guys are hearing this, um, that the Hornets are going to have to utilize Zoom, basically, to kind of <laughs> watch film together and um, and go over tape. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of that? I mean, you got to make the most of the situation, um, obviously. But uh, how do you think you uh, you would take to like a a, a tactical session um, <laughs> that's not on the court? Yeah, like I said, it's different. You know, you got to adjust now to the the new things that's happening with this pandemic, and it's created all kinds of norms, all kinds of scenarios in order to how to get information to the players and how to keep everybody together safely, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's the whole idea and whole key. Um, but it can be challenging. But again, you know, the professional information comes in, you know, everybody understand what it is, what their role, are, what their role is. So hopefully, you know, it can be helpful in that regards. But it's nothing similar. Nothing take place of getting up and down the court, you know, playing against your opponent and that sort of thing. So and planning against your teammates practicing, you know, building that type of chemistry, that camaraderie with one another. So that can have a big, big impact by not being together, you know, in the gym practicing. So, um, but again, like I said, teams got to adjust. They got to adjust to what all the things that's been thrown in their direction, which is out of their control. And I just got to make sure they put the best product out there on the floor for the organization. Almost oh, definitely. And then it just, that, what we're, what we're seeing, what we're experiencing with the Hornets and the Spurs are experiencing in their world, it's still insane to think about we're gonna have an all they're gonna try to have an all-star game after, yeah after all of this like yeah um as we get closer who knows what they'll do but like there's talks about lamello the league winning lamello in the skills competition which any other year yes 100 percent. but i don't know i don't know it seems very just it doesn't still doesn't seem right or at least the time for it but i don't know i don't know that could just be me though well, yeah, well, I mean, you know, it, it's kind of, you know, it's going to be different and it's going to be interesting to see if the NBA can pull it off. You know, if anybody can pull it off, you know, the NBA is probably the one who can do it. You know, mm -hmm. having that, you know, understanding that the type of event that you put on for our star event is a fan type of event. It's for fans getting together, interacting with those stars, those players that they see on TV. You know, because that's the type of, you know, service and type of atmosphere 
that they create during All Star Weekend. Um, so I don't know how many fans are gonna be let in. You know where the fans are gonna come from. You know is it gonna be just yeah. first responders or you know people, you know the, the essential workers or whom, whomever people in the, in the arena. I, I have no clue. You know who they gonna have attend. So any other groups gonna be involved, sponsor groups. So. It's going to be very interesting to see how they pull this off. Uh, but again, like I said, if any black could do it, the NBA, you know, they have their pulse on it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, but before we started, uh, you mentioned um, what you've been seeing on Twitter about LaMelo fans wanting him to play for a, in a bigger city. Um, do you want to you wanna address that? <laughs> well, you know, you just hear the little rumors that's out there, a little talk that beyond little – more or less on the internet or something in that regard. And it's more or less probably his fan, you know, and talking about having a player like Melo wish he was in a bigger market. Um, but then again, like I said, the grass is not always green on the other side. Um, I think this is perfect fit for Melo being in Charlotte, being in this type of organization, being in this type of market, because it don't put any pressure on him. Allow him to be him, allow him to grow into the player that he know he wants to be. You look at what's happening with Donovan Mitchell, you know, in Utah, you know, allow him to be able to grow, and so forth and be the player that, you know, he seemed that he knew he was capable of being. So, you know, you, you got to can't be, you know, you got to be careful what you wish for. I'm not, you know, these just this outside noise. I'm quite sure. Yeah. yeah. It's outside noise. I know the Hornets and Melo not even thinking or any, you know, let anything enter into that, you know, arena to that, re, uh, in that regard. So, uh, but that's just outside noise that you always hear wishing, you know, want players to be here, but, I think the best place and for him is here in Charlotte because he can be that player that we all envision he, he can be. And I think uh, having a low key market because he can, you know, he'll get his whatever he need endorsements or whatever it is off the court. He can get all that. But in terms of growing to be that star player that he see himself, this is a great place for it. Allow me a brief moment to talk about one of our newest sponsors, eBay. Whether rare dead stock or the latest release, find the exact shoe you're looking for. As the original sneaker marketplace, eBay is the place to go to cop the pair you've been eyeing. With eBay's authenticity guarantee, your sneakers are meticulously inspected by independent professional authenticators. A team of experienced sneaker authenticators verify the box, logo, stitching, and dozens of other inspection points. Each sneaker also receives an authenticity guarantee tag that includes a digital stamp of authenticity. And it also protects sellers with a verified return process. If you're a sneaker seller, they got you covered. eBay has eliminated selling fees on sneakers $100 and up, making it free to sell or flip your collection. Go to ebay.com slash sneakers today. eBay, the world's best destination for discovering great value and unique selection. Now back to the podcast. All right. So at this point in the podcast, we're going to roll out something new. Something mm. recurring, something that you can get involved with as you're listening at, at work, at home, in the car, wherever you're listening to. Uh, it's the Muggsy Mailbag. Pretty simple, straight to the point. <laughs> straight, straight I have a few point. questions in front of me. Um, if you want an opportunity to ask Muggsy a question, all you need to do is just send a tweet, hashtag Muggsy Mailbag. Um, Muggsy's Twitter uh, Twitter handle is in the description of the podcast. Mine is there too. Just make sure you have the hashtag Muggsy Mailbag, one word, and then we can uh, ask it on the podcast to the man himself. Uh, we're going to kick this one off though with a, I don't know if it's, I was going to say it's a simple one, but it made me be way more complex than I give it credit. Muggsy, straight up, what's your favorite NBA moment in your career? Oh my goodness, what's my favorite NBA moment? I mean, it's going to always come to the draft for me. You know, you had so many games that stand out, things that, but the draft, my most memorable moment in the NBA is draft night. Being drafted 12th overall in 87, you know, draft with the likes of the David Robinson, the Reggie Williams, the late Reggie Lois, may rest in peace, the Reggie Millers, and the Kevin Johnson, Kenny Smiths in the world. So Scotty Pittman as well. So a lot of Hall of Famers in that class. And 
So that's how I that I let that stand out to be one of my most memorable moments at the NBA. I like it. Nothing like you know that. The That's beginning. A, yeah, the very start. I mean, and I hope, you know, only went up from there, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, I got another one. Um, what did you love most about playing in Charlotte? For one, the fans. Fans was unbelievable. You know, knowing that you come into the arena with 24,000 screaming fans, night in and night out, screaming for you, your team. You know, it wasn't like they was coming to screaming in for Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan them. They were supporting the Charlotte Hornets, Buggy Bowles, Delight Johnson, Del Carey, all everybody that was, you know, suited up in a, in a Hornets uniform. And that's what I love about playing for the Hornets. You know, we didn't have fake fans. We didn't have them uh, coming because they wanted to come see the other player, the other team star. No, they came to support us. And uh, so that always would be, you know, at the front of my, you know, uh, memorable moments playing for the Hornets, playing in the city of Charlotte. All right, great, great. Um, I'm got one more for you. One more for you. Uh, did you have any superstitions while you were a player? <laughs> and if uh, if not, were there any interesting superstitions of one of your teammates that they had? You know, I wasn't a superstitious type of fella. You know, so I wasn't. I didn't have anything in that regard. I'm trying to think of. Any of my teammates was had any type of rituals or superstitions type of uh, thing that they did on a daily basis, and because uh, I played with so many of them, yeah, um, no like gosh, go to uh, pregame meal or anything. No, like that? no. Well, you know my go to pregame meal. You know, of course we had pregame meals set up, which it was already, you know, uh, made up for just you know your steak and all that type of stuff. Yeah. But, you know, me, I'm a seafood guy. You know, I, I had to get away from that red meat mm -hmm. and everything. So I became a seafood type of uh, go-to. But uh, but I'm still thinking, I, I don't think of any player that had any rituals. I can't think of them. You know, besides the young guys playing their headphones, <laughs> latter part in the league, you know, going out there, you know, playing. And that came latter part of our season. I mean, of my career. And then, you know, the late 90s, early 2000s, where the guys start to do that but. Other than that, I can't think of anybody had a ritual. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, um, I, I think that's a, let me find a, a more fun one to end on here. Yeah. All right. I don't, this one, see, I, I want to pick this one, but this may start a fight. I'll ask anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> Who's your favorite teammate that you ever played with in Charlotte? Damn. How are you going to say my one? That's too many. See, saw, too many, too many. That's why I don't want to start a fight. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I mean, by name, I, I mean, I got so many from the. Did I? I mean, from the Dell, the Larry, the Lazo, the Kendall, the Rex, the Jr. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, Johnny Newman. I mean, I mean, Gilliam may rest in peace. Anthony Frederick may he rest in peace. Ricky Green, Earl, the Twirl, Curate. I mean, I have so many players. I mean, in the go from the Oakleys and the Vince Carter. I mean, but we talking about Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte, yeah. So, um, gosh, too many. But, you know, my favorites are, of course, Dell, Larry Alonzo, and Rex Kendall. You know, Jay New. You know, they, they stand out. They stand out. All right. I like it. I like it. I'll allow as well it. As my, I, 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 can't I, make, I can't make you pick one. I can't, Curate, I can't do that to you. Yeah. I know those guys. I mean, that's whew, boy. You did. You almost did it. You almost. I had. I, had, I didn't take the bait. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I appreciate yeah. it. I think that's a good note to uh, to close out on. Um, I, I appreciate everyone that came through and, and checked out the Believe in Hornets podcast on the Believe Podcast Networks. Really appreciate it. We're here every single Wednesday, so be sure to subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to, iTunes, Spotify, what have you. Um, but yeah, until next time, I think we're we're out of here. Muggsy, any final words? Well, hey, come check us out. You know, tune in just like Sam said, download whatever you do, tune into us because we got the insights. And uh, but it's uh, it's just good to be here today. I mean, we had a lot of uh, things happen over the weekend, um, up and down with the Hornets. You know, mm -hmm. some wins, some losses, uh, but some great play. And, and some of our players, so uh, I'm I'm help, I'm hopeful. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 
grateful. I'm thankful. I will also say it's a good thing to know that we are in a good place right now in the seventh place in the standing. So if anything ended the day, we in the playoffs. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Playoffs yeah. we come. Yes, absolutely. Thank you.